Guitar and Excel, C major, A minor, 7 note scale, fret 0, otherwise known as open position, and fret 12, fingering. Get ready and some coffee, because you know, I made a business based on the core principle of knowing stuff like nobody's business. This ain't nobody's business but my own. Except my business, of course. My personal business is my personal business when it might interfere with the smooth operation of because because it's my business's mission statement to know stuff like nobody's business. Shit, you think that happened? It could happen. Except, of course, my business. State your business. You know, I actually copied the business model of knowing stuff like nobody's business. Man, and none of yours. I'm from the business across the street, owned by some guy named Nobody. Got the idea from them, but. So, you know, if you've, ever, if you've ever purchased services from the business across the street, you know, from Mr. Nobody's business... Push down, takes up! It looks like they got better aim. You, you may want to try us out over here because, because we know stuff like nobody's business. Ah, uh, Crazy Talk came up with that. He got idea from dancers with focus groups. And at a reduced price. At half the price. Mom, do not screw me over again! Plus, we throw in a toaster. I can't believe this toaster was free. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Access oh! to this workbook, that's okay. You could just follow along. But if you do have access, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. Quick recap of the project thus far, noting that you don't have to have watched all prior presentations to follow along with this one, but a general overview of the overall project can be useful, helpful to orientate us. Let's go back to that first tab to get that overview. We've been looking at the C major scale and related modes, first mapping it out in open position, which we defined as frets 0 through 3, remembering that this E represents the low or heavy string, the one closest to the ceiling on our fretboard. Funnest way to map out the notes in open position in a scale is to create the chords from the notes in the scale, starting with the one chord, that in this case being the C major chord, which we mapped out in open position discussed in detail. We then move to the four chord because it also has a major chord construction, mapped it out, discussed it in detail. Same with the five chord, then back to the two chord. Why? Because it has a minor chord construction. And then we did the same with the three chord and the six chord and then the seven chord, which has a diminished chord construction. If we were to map out all the notes of all the chords that we constructed, we would basically have the notes in the C major scale and related modes, which would look something like the blue notes that we see here. We then moved up to the middle of the guitar, which I'm going to call position one. You can call it a G-shaped position as well, where we wanted to learn not first by chord shapes, but by scale shapes first with the pentatonic scale and then the full major scale. And then we discussed each of the notes and focused on each of the notes and how we can kind of blend that into what we learned in chord shapes in open position. And then we did a similar process moving to the next shape, which I'll call shape two or an E shaped, learned the pentatonic and majors, how it relates to the prior shape and how we can kind of practice that in relation to open position. We then looked at each of the notes within that shape, focusing on each one, basically looking at different modes, but not from the perspective of modes, which we'll talk about later. We then went to the next shape, did the same thing, which I'll call shape three or a D shaped, looked at the pentatonic and major scale there, how it links to the prior shapes and open position, how we can practice those. We focused on each of the notes within them as well. And now we're up to what I would call shape number four, which you could call uh, the C shape. Now, this is an interesting point where we are because now this is where the guitar repeats. So we're at fret 12. That's where the guitar repeats. So you can see here, fret 12 is going to be the repeating process. I think it's useful to, to have a guitar. That's why I switched to the, to the electric here so that I have enough room up here so that I can see where... Uh, the guitar uh, repeats. I finally cleaned up the guitar a bit. I, I adjusted it a bit and put new strings on it. So hopefully it sounds better this time. And I practiced with it a little bit because I haven't been using it much. But so now we have because I've been messing with the acoustics. But in any case, so now we have it repeats. So if I learn the position up top, 
then we can also see it in open position, which we started learning, but we learned open position by first thinking about chord shapes rather than by looking at it from a scale format. And this will help us so that we can see it in a position where we have to finger the whole shape and then how that's going to be augmented or adjusted when the nut is here, giving us actually more reach, but also kind of throwing off our normal pattern of thought, which is basically that we go pinky to pointer to get for a whole step here. We, because we have the nut here, we can actually reach a little bit further up, which is why open position is a beautiful place to be on the guitar. It's a, that's the most popular place to be. You got a little bit more reach and things you can do in that position but we also want to recognize it's the same as this position so that we can shift all these shapes as we want to do you know different things playing different scales and so on and so forth so quick recap of all the color codes and schemes that we have here the color schemes we've got then underneath this whole thing i would imagine we have all of the notes in the the c major scale here are the notes here to here i'm representing them with letters and absolute numbers so all the blue notes are underneath. And then we put on top of that the five notes that are the pentatonic, which fit perfectly on top of all the blue notes. So you can imagine there is a blue note underneath all the green notes here. And the, the ones that haven't been overlapped are the two notes that are in the major scale, which are not in the pentatonic uh, scale. And that's going to be our focus this time, because last time we looked at fingering and intervals for the pentatonic scale. Now we're adding this, this extra note. Now, if we, if we look through that, you could see that this blue note that we're adding, if I was to look at this on uh, one string, if I, if I start on, say, let's look at it from... Let's go from this C so I can get the whole distance here. So if I go from that C up to this C, that's how it would kind of look on a, on a piano. And if I look at all the notes that we would have uh, on the way up, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo, there's our, our uh, major scale. Boom, 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 boom. And I don't need this purple thing here. So you can see you got whole step, whole step, and then the blue note is the half step, right? So, so in the pentatonic, we removed that half step and ended with this three note distance rather than having that half step, right? So then it goes half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, and then back to the half step. Again, we remove the half step that leads back home. So, the, so that's kind of a safer thing to do. That's why the pentatonic kind of works in more settings and you're less likely to hit something that's off because you're losing those half steps because that creates the tension a lot of time. But when you want to create the tension, then of course that you want to strategically be adding those half steps. So some people, like I say, they, so a lot of people actually do quite well thinking of everything in terms of pentatonic and then augmenting the pentatonic to whatever they are doing. Uh, other people think in terms of the full major scale and then kind of reduce the major scale down to the pentatonic in, in my mind are the two ways that pe people often kind of structure things in their mind. So there's multiple ways to, to look at it. It's all, this, it's all the same as long as we don't look at it incorrectly, right? It, it's just different ways to, to envision what we're doing, which could be useful for different reasons. So in any case, the other thing that's great about the full seven note scale is that the pentatonic, you will recall, fits perfectly when we're thinking about the mode uh, of the Ionian or the major scale and its related uh, mode of the of the minor, which we could call Aeolian if we're thinking in modes. So, and that's why another why the reason why the pentatonic is so popular because it obviously fits inside the two major modes that we use, major and minor. But but it doesn't fit so well if we try to make the like the the second note the tonic which means we'll basically be playing in Dorian and so on and so forth, in which case you can augment the pentatonic by saying, hey, look, that F is important here. So I can play that same pentatonic and then add the F because I'm focusing on a D. You know, that's one way you can think of it. Or if we think of it in terms of the major scale, then obviously we could start on any of these notes and we can play any of the modes using the same scale, focusing in essence on the different notes. So that's kind of... Uh, the idea here that we'll be practicing with. 
So, so what we want to do up top here is just basically finger through this scale up top, and then we'll see how the fingering is augmented when we go down here to uh, the open position. And as we do so, we kind of want to envision that we are doing the same thing we did here, like C to C, except we want to do it in one position, C to C. So we're basically going to be starting in this point, if you're thinking of yourself starting or in the key of C, which is usually the st what we'll start with, and then you can go to the other ones, which would be like E to E, right? G to G, F to F, and so on. You can do each of these modes. But as you play these, most people are gonna see these positions. Like I'm gonna see this position as it starts like right there, because that's my, I'm gonna say, oh, that's position number four. But you want, and you might need to do that on the top string to see it's position number four, but you also wanna recognize where each of the notes are so that you can basically change it so that you're playing in the proper key. So you want to be playing up and down these scales knowing what mode you're playing in. So a lot of times you want to be starting on the C and then the A for the for the C and the and the A minor. Okay, a uh, quick recap on these colors, these brackets represent our positions uh, on the guitar. And these positions are going to be named. You'll hear people name them two things. Some people use a numbering system, which is usually just this generic numbering system. Other people are opposed to the numbering system because they don't think whatever. But I would think it's useful. So, so they're going to say the C. We have to name it or tag it typically to the related major. So whatever we're looking at here, we might be looking at any of these modes. We're usually going to name the position with the related major. So if I was in D Dorian, I'm still probably going to look back to the C to say, okay, that's the, the second of a C, the related C major, and then name these positions based on the major mode, right? Because that's our, that's our starting point, usually for Western music. So for here, for example, you can see the C shape looks like this. And that's why we can build around it the pentatonic, which we did last time. This shape, although it's a three note chord, fits inside of the pentatonic uh, shape uniquely, but it doesn't fit uniquely when we talk about seven notes. And that's one way reason why the pentatonic is also quite useful because it, it's unique, the shapes fit within it uniquely, and then we can add the two notes uh, to it. So we would call that, uh, you know, the C shape, doot, 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 or you can call it position number four, that's the shape uh, that we are in. And then we learned that in open position. And then we jumped up here to what I would call position one or the G-shaped position. Why is it called a G-shape? Because this C fits in it. If you had this doot, 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 that's a, that's a G-shaped C, uh, C that we would have here that we'd have to usually play like this or like this. We take two pieces of it, take it apart. But you can use that shape to name that position which only works though, if you're looking at the related major scale, or you could just call it that's position one, right? Uh, if you wanna use that terminology. And then we go to position two. And again, if we go back to the major scale and look at the major, you can see this wraps, there's the C right there. And it looks like this. So this shape that we build around it to make a major chord is duh, 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 duh. And that's the same as our E shape back here. So that's why you could call this an, an E-shaped uh, C, uh, C major chord, right? And you can, that's why you might call it an E-shape, or you can call it shape number two. <laughs> and then we can go to, to shape number three, and you can see that this C right here, there's the octave right there. And so if I was to pick up that C, I can look going forward this way, boom, boom, boom. And so this is this little shape. You can see the triangle up here, which is right there, which is like a D-shaped right there, but it's leaning back. That's why you might call that a, a, a D-shaped uh, position. And now we're going up to the C-shape. So now if I look at this C right here that we were on and lean that forward, then we can reach up to uh, this C up top. Right, and so then we can call that basically again our C shape, and that C shape is the same shape that is back here in open position. So that's basically the idea if we wanted to label or name this shape. So 
then once we start to finger with it, it would be useful to actually uh, like actually t say the, the relative positions as we finger through it. You don't have to do that, but I think that's a useful technique. And again, I think you, we want to start fingering through it at whatever our focal point is, in this case, the C. So I'm going to say there's the C. I'm going from this C uh, up to this C here, right? So if I was to, to, to name the notes, I'm going to say, okay, that's going to be one, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So then I've gone up to this C and then eight or one, of course, is eight or one. So I'm going to start back over at one at this one and say this is going to be one, two, three, four, five. That leaves me at this G and I'm not going to keep going up here. I'm going to stay within this box and just go back down. Five, four, three, two, one. And that's going to take me back to this C. And then I'm just going to play back through this until I get to the C back here. So I'm going to say this is going to be eight. Now I'm going to start at eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And that takes me back to this C here. And then we can go back down to this E. So I'm going to go to this E and back up. So I'm going to say this is going to be eight again. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so that allows me to keep focusing on the C while still playing the entire shape. And so that's going to be the idea. Now you might actually also want to include like a chord construction when you hit the thing that you're playing. So that C right there, for example, I can build a shape off it. You can, you can basically make the C shape, which would be like uh, this. So that's going to be uh, this note, this note, and this note. It's not exactly a C chord because you're not picking up uh, the, 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 the G over here is necessary to pick the fifth up. So that's a little bit more difficult because you got to finger it like this to pick that one up. That's why the fingering gets a little bit uh, tricky sometimes, but you can uh, do it that way. You can also finger it this way if you wanted to. So I'm grabbing this E underneath. So we could finger it like that as well. So then when you play through this, it might be easiest just to grab it like you would with a C. So for example, we might just use the same C shape, but mute this string here, which isn't actually a C chord because we're missing the fifth, but it still has the two C's and the third in it, which gives us the major flavor and we see that same shape. So when I get to that C, I'll play this shape and then I'll count through it. We'll say, this is gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then when I'm down here on this C, maybe I play these three notes, give it that little D-shaped C. So we can go da, da, da. And then I'm gonna be down here on this C and go up to that G and back. So I'm gonna say one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. And then I'll play that little D-shaped C. Right, and then I'm on this C right here and I'm gonna go back down. So I'm gonna say this is gonna be eight now. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And then I'm going to play that C shape. And then I'm going to go down from here to the E and then back up again. So we're going to say, okay, this is going to be uh, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then again. So that's a useful uh, little exercise. Now we could do that same kind of thing over here now. So let's move it to this one, which should mirror. So there's our C here and here's our C in open position. Now, if, if I wanna compare this to the shape, to this shape, I could try practicing like as though my finger was on the nut. So if my finger was on the nut, I'd have to use this finger here to be, to be fingering every, everything on this side. So if I was to start on this C, I'd have to play it basically, you know, with my pinky here and go something like, this is kind of difficult for me to do sometimes, but there and in the open position, here, 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 right? And so then I can, so I can imagine as though I'm putting this finger down. Now that's actually difficult for most people to do, 
even though you would think it would make sense because I've, I know this shape, my hands know that shape, but over here playing the nut is a little bit difficult. But we want to be able to see that so that if I play this way, obviously my fingers are shifted up one. So instead of having to go from pinky to pointer uh, to get to like a whole step, we're going from, for example, this C to the open position instead of it going from pinky to pointer to take that whole step. See this C to the D is a whole step. C to D. If, if I had to finger this, it would be going from pinky to pointer. But instead of having to go from pinky to pointer, I can go from ring finger because all my fingers are shift up. So I go from ring finger to open position, right? Ring finger to open position. Okay, so once we get that idea down, then we can go through the same shape, which fits obviously beautifully into the structure of our hand when we're looking at like a C. So now I'm gonna count through this again, going from C to C. So I'm gonna say, okay, this is gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now we're on this C and then I'm gonna take that down to this G and then back up. So once again, I'm gonna start at a one. So one, two, three, four, five. Now I'm at the G, going back down. Five, four, three, two, one. So now I'm on this C again. And let's bring that C down to this C. So I can say, okay, this is gonna be eight now. So we'll say eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So now I'm on this C. I'm gonna bring that down to this E and then back up again. So I'm gonna go from uh, eight now, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now I'll do the same thing, but every time I land on the C, I'm gonna make a chord construction. So obviously I have my nice C chord construction. You can see it this way. You can also grab this one up top, and that's why that shape fits in there that we saw before. And if I look at the bottom of this shape, you can see that you have that little D shape. That's why that D shape, if I lean forward, it's a C, right? If I lean back, it's a D. So I can't lean back here because I'm on the nut, right? But if I saw that, whenever I see that D shape, you, we get that idea. Now that D shape, look at how much different it looks over here. This is kind of, for me, it's always a little confusing, right? Because I'm visualizing a D that looks like this with this little triangle shape. But when I play it with the nut, like I'd have to play it like this, right? And then, right, I'd have to play it like this. But that's still kind of weird to visualize because it's so easy to play, it's ridiculous. You just put that one finger there, which looks like that, instead of if I had to play it up here, it would look like that with, with my finger on this D, right? So, so this bottom bit, I just hold this finger down and I get the bottom, which is that little D-shaped C. Uh, and you can also call it a C shape because it's, a, it's the in-between part, right? Because if I play a D, I'm usually playing this open string too. This string is ringing out. That's why I'm leaning back to get that D shape. Here, I'm using that same D shape, but leaning forward or thinking of leaning forward to, you know, like the C. Okay, so then if I do this again, we're gonna say one, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's that D, so now I'm just gonna play those three. And then I'm gonna go out. One, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. And then that little D shape. And then I'm gonna say this is eight now. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. I can play my C shape this way. And then I'm gonna go, this is gonna be uh, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then maybe you play it like this way, up here, or this way. Just to get the different shapes in our mind. Okay, so then we can we can do that same thing by looking at the different modes now. So if I wanna play this same shape, I can still learn this shape but learn how I can start and stop on each mode. So the next most common mode is the minor mode. So I've hidden my worksheet over here to see the minor. If I was to play the minor, now I'm focused on that A. If I was to convert that to the first, 
that's what a minor is, and that the minor is basically an Aeolian mode. So if I count it through it, I can start on the A and count one through seven or one through eight, starting with the A as the one, and I would be playing an A minor if I played all the same shapes, but starting from here to here, the same shape, but starting point is different. But it, uh, I'm not really thinking in modes right now, so I can also think of it as though I'm playing around the sixth of the related major. So in other words, if I, if I go up to this position again, here's my A. So I could start at the one and say this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That means I'm basically playing a minor and I know I'm playing a minor because I'm just using this same shape and I'm just playing from the sixth to the sixth. So, that, so as long as I'm using the same shape, I'm using, I'm playing the related mode. I'm just making this in essence, the tonic, but I want to count it out as though I'm still thinking of myself in the key of C so that I can think of myself as playing around the sixth. And then we'll talk more about modes later. We'll do this a lot more detail as we focus on each of these notes. Uh, later, but just to get an idea if we're playing the same shape instead of just playing the shape like starting here and going duh, 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 Which I spent a lot of time doing like I still can only really see the shape sometimes like by looking at that top string and where it starts But but what we <laughs> that's not great, right? What we want to be able to do is be able to be able to practice it from each point uh, And that would be a lot better. So I'm gonna say let's go from six to six so I'm going to start at that A and say that's the 6 this time. And I'm going to try to count out from 6 to 6. So 6, 7, 8, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So then I've started it from 6 to 6 instead of 1 to 8 or back to 1. And that brings me to, from this A, I'm going to go down to this G and then back up again. So now I'm on uh, this A. I'm going to say this is going to be now the 6 and then seven, eight, or one, two, three, four, five, and then back down, five, four, three, two, one, or eight, seven, six, six. And so now I'm back down to this A, and then I'm gonna go from this A back down to this A. So now we're gonna go from, uh, uh, let's call it uh, six, five, four, three, two, one, or eight, seven, six, and now I'm back down to this A, and then I'm going to bring it back down to that E and up again. So now we're going to say this is going to be uh, uh, six, five, four, three, three, four, five, six. And so, so that way I'm kind of still thinking of myself in the C major, but I'm playing around the A, uh, which means I'm basically playing in the aeolian or minor mode what did i do for crying out loud for for silent sobbing sake okay so so then i could as i do that i might want to start and stop the same way i did before and uh the 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 chord so this would be that would be our our standard bar chord I won't do this for each one because we'll we'll do that more later, but that's another thing you might want to do. You might want to say, I'm going to build a chord when I hit the tonic. The A, I'll build a chord, then I'll play through it, and then I'll build a chord over here. Just a, another way that you can kind of go through that exercise. We can do that down here as well. So there's my A here and here. So now, of course, this A is the open. So if I tried to, if I was to finger it, I'd be like, okay, I'd have to be fingering this string right here, and it would be like, that would be fingered, one, two, three, and then I would be fingering like this D, four, five, uh, uh, six, and then it would be, I would be fingered seven, and then eight, right, would be something like that if I played it in the mode of an Aeolian. But I'm gonna use it as the sixth, and then try to move my fingers up. We're obviously working off of this A shape. This is our A shape, so you can play that to start with if you wanted to. And then we could finger it just this way. So now I have this open A. So that's gonna be, I'm gonna call that the six now. Six, seven, eight, or one. Two, three, four, five, six. And so we went from six to six. Here's the other A here. Let's bring that up to the G and then back down. This A right here, and I'm gonna say that's gonna be 
the six. So I'm going to say six, seven, eight, or one, two, three, four, five. So now I'm on the G. Five, four, three, two, one, or eight, seven, six. And so that brings me down to this A again. And then I go from this A to this A. I'm going to say that is going to be my six. Uh, so, so that's going to be the six, five, four, three, two, one, or eight, seven, six. And that brings me back down to here. And then, I'm, so I'm going to go from this A back down to this E and back up. I'm going to call that the six again. So, six, five, four, three. So there's the E at three, three, four, five, six. And that brings me back to uh, this A. Now, we can do this again for each of the modes. We'll talk more about this later. But if I was to then say, let's go back to the second, not as common a mode, but still quite common, it would be the Dorian. So I could just say, okay, I'm just going to do the Dorian. If I hide on my worksheet over here to the Dorian, hide, da -da, I can say, all right. Uh, then I'm still just going to be thinking about it as the two. So you don't really need to hide the worksheet, but I'm just showing you that if I made that two, the one, everything would be the same, except now I'm changing my relative positions, making it the center point by calling it number one, as opposed to just saying, I'm going to play around the two. So if I did that, for example, we could say, okay, let's start over here again. And now I'm just going to play this same thing. I'm going to find my lowest root note that I'm going to make the root now and now I'm just I know that shape fits and if I just start on a different note I'm, I'm as long as I play the same shape then I'm basically playing in the Dorian right so I'm going to start down here on the D and I could make it the one right so if I play the same shape and make that the one I'd say okay this is going to be one two three four five six seven eight so now I went from D to D made it the Dorian mode here to here, calling it the one, or I could just keep it as the two. So I could say, I'm going to play the same shape and practice this shape. And now just call it the two. I'm going to play around the two, making it the tonic. So I'm going to go two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or one, two. So I went from two to two, and then I can, I can play that up to the G here. So I'm going to say, this is going to be uh, two, Three, four, five, four, three, two. So that brings me up to that G and back down. And then I'm going to go from here to here. So then I'm going to say this is going to be two, uh, one, or eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. And so now I went from here to here. And then I can bring that down to the E and back up again. So we can say, okay, this is going to be the two, one, or eight, seven, six, five, four, three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or one, two. Right? And then I could do the same thing on this side and say, okay, could I do that in open position? So if I was in open position, it's the same shape, but now my D looks like this. Uh, that would be a D major. What am I doing? D minor would look like this. So that would be my D minor, and if I was to play this, it would be open position, so I'd have to be like, okay, I'd be holding this down, so I'd have to hold this one down if it, if it wasn't the nut, I'm going to go from 1 to 8, so I'd be playing like in Dorian now, so this would be the 1, and then 2, 3, and then I'd have to hold that down, 4, and then 5, and then holding this, 6, 7, 8, and so then I'm back up to this pinky here. Now, obviously, if I moved my fingering up into this position, then I'm going to then do the same thing. This time, I'm going to count from two to two. So the open D is going to be a two. So I'm going to say this is going to be two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or one, two. And that brings me to this D. And then I'm going to take that D up to the G and back, calling it the two, playing around the two. So now I'm going to say two, three, four, five, four, three, two. And then I'm going to take this uh, two down to this two. So then I'm going to say this is going to be uh, two, one, or eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. So now that's down to this D, and then we can take that D 
down to this E. So I'm going to say this is going to be uh, 2, 1, or 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, or and 2. All right. <laughs> so then I could do the same thing if I just do all the modes, right? I could say, okay, well, what if I went to the next one, which would be hide... And I can say that would basically be a Phrygian mode. Or I could just say, now I'm just going to play around the 3 or the E. So I can just practice this same shape and say, now I'm just going to make the E the center point. So I'm going to go from E to E. So if I play this same shape, the related major is the C. So it's shape number 4 still. But now I'm going to play it from E to E, which is probably how a lot of people just learn the shape because they start on the lowest no, this is how I learned the shape, right? So then I'm, but now to do it right, I think it would be better to put in my mind that, that if I play from this note to this note, I'm playing in basically a Phrygian mode, or in essence, I'm making the third the tonic. So if I convert it to a Phrygian, I just convert the numbering system one to eight, starting on the E instead of the C. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? But now I'm going to say, let's do it making this the three and stay in the key of C just playing around the third so I can get that concept in my mind so I'd say this is three four five six seven eight or one two three and then I'm on this E and then I can do the same thing uh, down here going from uh, this E to this E so then I can say this is going to be the uh, three four five six seven eight or one two three and then I can keep on going, right? But I want to go through the next few here just so we get an idea. So if I go from this E to this E in open position, we can do the same thing here. If I was to fret it, I'd have to say, okay, there's, I'm going to go from 1 to 8 again. I'm going to say I'd have to put my finger here if I was fretting the nut. 1, 2, 3. And then I'd have to fret that A, 4, 5, 6, fretting the D, 7, 8. But if I don't fret them, I move my fingers up, I shift my fingers up, then this would, of course, be open. And it would be going from uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then if I play around the 3, that low E is now going to be the third, the 3. So 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, uh, 1. I'm sorry, eight or one, two, three. So we can play it around that way. And then of course, if we went to the next one up, let's go to the next one and say, duh, 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 duh. Lydian will hide this out. Look at that worksheet is so great. So now we can go to the next one. And then I, I'm not, I not charging enough for this Excel worksheet. I need to up the price. I don't know what it <laughs> okay so this so then I then I could do the same thing and I can I can practice these same shapes but now I'm just gonna go from F to F which means I'm basically playing the Lydian if I started in Lydian then I can just say well I'll make that the one so I could say this is gonna be one two three uh, three four five six seven eight or and then I would keep on going or I can keep it as the four and play around the four. So I'm going to say four, five, six, seven, eight, or one, two, three, four, going from four to four. And of course, we can do the same thing in open position, basically starting on this F. So if I make this is the one over here, one, two, three, four, five. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to say this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or. I can keep that as the four. So now I'm going to say this is going to be uh, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, or one, two, three, four. And we can keep on going up with that one. The next one, let's do the next one, which is going to be the Mixolydian hide. And we'll do these more in more depth as we focus on each each one of these in future presentations. But just to get an idea how we can practice this shape a little bit more in detail than just playing top to bottom like this, right? So so then 
Obviously, if we went to the next one, it would be the G. That would be the mixolydian. So I can just play the same shape. But now, say I'm playing around the fifth. And I'm just going to say, OK, I'm just going to be playing around the fifth. Basically, I'm playing the related, you know, the related G to the C major scale, right? The related G mode to the C major scale or the fifth of the C major scale or the mixolydian mode. So if I made that the one, then I can say this. If I make that the one, I'd be playing in mixolydian. I just count up to eight. So I would say that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? Or I can keep it as the fifth and say, okay, this is going to be five, six, seven, eight, or one, two, three, four, five. And then again, I can go all the way up to here and back. If I did the same thing in open position, I can then see how that fits, you know, in the open position. So I could say, okay, here's my, my G. So if I make that the one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If I keep it at the fifth, I would go from five to five, five uh six seven eight or one two two three four five that was kind of ugly but you get the idea the next one is the minor which we already did and then you have the uh locrian now this one i'm not going to spend a lot of time on it because it's not something you usually play in terms of scales so so you probably aren't going to be playing too much from from the seventh to the seventh uh, but the Locrian helps to get those to get that that leading tone back to back to home. So you're not usually making the the seventh the tonic. Why? Because a lot of the beauty of the seventh from a major scale construction or the major modes, whatever, is that it leads back to the one. It's the tension that leads back to the one, oftentimes. So so I won't spend a lot of time on that. So but but what so that that means that we can practice these this fourth shape in particular not by just going from top to bottom but by playing that same shape from each different note and then we can practice different modes while we do that and then we can kind of convert that shape to how it would look in open position and practice the adjustment of the fingering being better able to convert what we learned in terms of chord shapes to the actual scales shapes now